off the day and welcome to KOM News Extra. I am Sonia Artero. Held in conjunction with UOG's Charter Day activities, the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences has brought to Guam the award-winning filmmakers, a husband and wife team, to screen their film entitled The Land Has Eyes. This is the first film from Fiji made on the island of Rotuma, which is an 87-minute narrative drama about Vicky, a young South Pacific Islander who redeems her family's name by exposing the secrets of her island most powerful and important people. The film has been presented at every major international film festival and has aired on public television. Here to share the mission behind making this film is the director himself, Vilsani Heronico, who is joined by his wife, the movie's producer, Jeanette Paulson Heronico. Thank you both for coming on. It's a pleasure and honor. Wow, I've been reading about you all day long and I just feel like it, what an honor. So thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to share your time and your experience with us here. Now, first off, tell us what the title of the film means, because I know in every film there is a wonderful meaning behind every title. Yes. Um, thank you, Sonia, for having us on your program. Uh, the Land Has Eyes in Rutuman. Um, it uh, goes like this, Piarta Maun Maf, and it comes from the Rutuman proverb, Piarta Maun Maf, which in English means the land has eyes, the land has teeth, and knows the truth. And essentially, Rutumans believe that the land is alive, the land is very much like a human being, is always watchful, and that's where the title comes from. Now, what inspired you to make this film in the first place? Well, I've been a, a, a playwright for you know 20 years or so, so I've been a storyteller all my life, uh, basically, you know, since I left university, and uh, I wanted to make a feature film. And um, when I met uh, my wife Jeanette, who uh, is the founder of the Hawaii International Film Festival, I got to meet a number of directors from Asia and from the U.S. and other parts of the world, and uh, I thought that. Uh, indigenous people should uh, have access to this medium, the most powerful medium, which is film, to tell their stories. And then I thought about what story I could tell, and I was advised by an Indian director uh, by the name of Buddhadeb Dasgupta uh, to go back to my uh, childhood experiences, go back to the island where I was born, and tell a story based on my childhood, because that's uh, the story that only I can tell better than anybody else. And he thinks that for first feature, that's what I should do. So that, that was what inspired me. And much of it I read was uh, loosely based on how you were raised, which you just explained to us. But tell us in particular the different things of the film that you wanted to ensure people knew about the way you were raised. Uh, well, there's a number of things. I would say about 70% or so of the events that are in the movie are things that actually happened to me uh, or to uh, members of my family. Um, my father was a storyteller. I'm the youngest of 11 children, and so I was raised on the so-called myths and legends of the island. So I grew up uh, with a very vivid imagination. Um, for example, I... I Quite often, when I would listen to these stories, I would identify with the heroes, and you know, even you know, some of the stories that I read later on about Greek mythology, uh, I was given a book which had all these myths and legends, and and those stories really fired my imagination. Um, my father passed away when I was 14, and that was a tra uh, traumatic experience for me. And uh, I wanted to kind of there's a scene in the movie where the father dies. And I wanted to kind of explore that emotional uh, intensity and the feeling of loss. Uh, my father was also uh, falsely accused of a crime. And the family was shamed for many years afterwards. And that scene is also in the movie. But I think if I can identify just one thing, I would say it's the belief that uh, um, the land um, as far as the Rutuman people are, are concerned, um, is watchful, and the land is vigilant, and the land can bring about justice. Uh, and I think with that kind of knowledge, one sees the land very differently. You know? And I think that's a, um, an attitude towards land that a lot of people, maybe not just native people, but people who have a homeland, uh, believe in. 
and, and that I think is important. Now I wanted to give uh, equal kudos to your wife because she plays an integral role and, and her background and experience is so vast as well. Jeanette Paulson Heronico has been involved in television and film for over 30 years. She is the founding director of the Hawaii International Film Festival, the first director and programmer of the Palm Springs International Film Festival. In 1994 she established uh, NetPack USA, a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting Asian and Pacific films in the United States. So tell us about your role in this particular film. I, I can go on and on and on, just so oh, gosh, you know. Kind of but you tell us. It, you did a read <laughs> today. Uh, you're sure so prepared. Now, what did you want me? What was the question? Yeah. <laughs> your role in this film in producing in this, film? this particular film. Well, uh, I think in, in this, it was very varied in this in this film. You know, it's Billy's story, and I think I really. Uh, felt as a producer, maybe what I could do that another producer couldn't do, would really be to kind of step aside and let him ha uh, really be his story and for him to get the people of his community and do what a Rituman would do in making the film so that the process of the film would become as important in the making of the film. And I think oftentimes, if had it been a Hollywood film or had it been a studio film, uh, that kind of freedom a director writer doesn't normally get to have because it was a subtitle film and it was in the language of the of the of the story so I think it's uh, really important if you care about a person's right to tell their own story from their own community if you are an outsider of that community maybe the best thing you can do is step aside and so what I saw my role really was raising the money and helping where I could. It doesn't mean it was always easy, but right. that's what I tried my best to do. Sometimes I was better than sometimes I wasn't so good. <laughs> Actually, she is extremely humble because <laughs> no. you should read her, her bio. In addition to that, can you please elaborate on where you did get the funding finally? Sure. Uh, I think that if a, if a filmmaker, and think if, I, if I could say anything to your listeners, is that everybody ha has a story to tell. And it's really important if you want to be a filmmaker, you should just go out and do it. And it's really good to use your own story. If you use your own story, then you have a right to feel passionate about it. And you go to your family, to your friends, to your own money, to your own charge of cards, to mortgage your second home, but you do anything you can, just like Nike Shoes says, you just do it. Just do now it. you also find out about grants, and we're really lucky as people who live on an island, because there is this organization called Pacific Islanders in Communication, and they do have money for people who live in Guam, for people who live in Hawaii, that are going to tell stories about them, their own experiences, about Pacific Island experiences, and they were very helpful to us in giving us a very nice size grant. But really, mahalo and nui is what we say in Hawaii to all our friends, our family, and to American Express and the people who had our second mortgage. <laughs> we made American that American Express charge. <laughs> Anyways, I'm glad you touched on the challenges because those are the, some of the things that I found most fascinating about your making of this, this film. So I, we will touch on that when we come back. So please stay with us.